Excerpt from Capital in the 21st Century by Thomas Piketty. The economic and social transformations of the late 18th and early 19th centuries were objectively quite impressive, not to say traumatic for those who witnessed them. Indeed, most contemporary observers shared relatively dark or even apocalyptic views of the long-run evolution of the distribution of wealth and class structure of society. This was true in particular of David Ricardo and Karl Marx, who were surely the two most influential economists of the 19th century, and who both believed that a small social group, landowners for Ricardo, industrial capitalists for Marx, would inevitably claim a steadily increasing share of output and income. For Ricardo, who published his Principles of Political Economy and Taxation in 1817, the chief concern was the long-term evolution of land prices and land rents. He was above all interested in the following logical paradox. Once both population and output begin to grow steadily, land tends to become increasingly scarce relative to other goods. The law of supply and demand then implies that the price of land will rise continuously, as will the rents paid to landlords. The landlords will therefore claim a growing share of national income as the share available to the rest of the population decreases, thus upsetting the social equilibrium. For Ricardo, the only logically and politically acceptable answer was to impose a steadily increasing tax on land rents. This somber prediction proved wrong. Land rents did remain high for an extended period, but in the end the value of farmland inexorably declined relative to other forms of wealth as the share of agriculture in national income decreased. Writing in the 1810s, Ricardo had no way of anticipating the importance of technological progress or industrial growth in the years ahead. His insight into the price of land is nevertheless interesting. The scarcity principle on which he relied meant that certain prices might rise to very high levels over many decades. This could well be enough to destabilize entire societies. The price system plays a key role in coordinating the activities of millions of individuals. Indeed, today, billions of individuals in the new global economy. The problem is that the price system knows neither limits nor morality. To be sure, there exists in principle a quite simple economic mechanism that should restore equilibrium to the process, the mechanism of supply and demand. If the supply of any good is insufficient and its price is too high, then demand for that good should decrease, which should lead to a decline in its price. In other words, if real estate and oil prices rise, then people should move to the country or take to traveling about by bicycle, or both. Never mind that such adjustments might be unpleasant or complicated. They might also take decades during which landlords and oil well owners might well accumulate claims on the rest of the population so extensive that they could easily come to own everything that can be owned, including rural real estate and bicycles once and for all. It is much too soon to warn readers that by 2050, they may be paying rent to the Emir of Qatar. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and social media and support at Patreon. Thank you.